Hello, <clears throat> welcome to another uh, lecture of CS360. And in this lecture, we will cover um, the busy beaver function and fast growing functions. Okay, so um, what is the busy beaver function? So it's an example of a function that grows faster than every computable function. So in fact, it grows so fast that it, it uh, it's a well so it's a function we usually denote by bb um, and it goes from natural numbers to natural numbers okay and the the function bb of n when n grows larger and larger this value grows large so fast um, that it's faster than any computable function so for example the function um, two to the two to the two to the n. That's a function you can compute. Um, you can clearly write a, a Python program to compute this function given input n. You can output this number. Um, so therefore, busy beaver grows faster than this function. Um, and then you you know you can come up with other fast growing computable functions like two to the two to the um, or like this thing um, is n. You can do this where n is your input and you exponentiate uh, your towers of height n. Um, this is something you can do with a, with a program. You'll just like have a, a loop for how many times you, you call this exponentiation function. So you can write a program to, to, to compute this number given input n. Therefore, busy beaver of n grows faster than this function. Um, or, you know, just more generally, um, you know, um, there, there's some other fast growing functions like the Ackermann function, uh, which is sort of um, a generalization of, of this, uh, you know, um, you know how multiplication is adding something repeatedly and exponentiation is multiplying repeatedly. And this tower function here is, is like exponentiating repeatedly. Um, so the Ackermann function sort of generalizes that and it um, you can imagine Ackermann like n n where you apply the nth operator like the multiplication then uh, exponentiation then this tower function and you go to the next operator up so you go to the nth operator um, and then apply that to n um, and then uh, this is still computable so the busy beaver function grows uh, faster than that. Um, so it grows faster than anything you can define using any normal language uh, because anything you can kind of define in a reasonable way, if you define it in a reasonable way, probably pretty much describe a program to compute it. Um, and therefore, busy beaver function grows faster than that. Um, okay, so we're talking about very fast growing functions. So um, how do we get a function that grows that fast? And the answer is that the busy beaver um, of n, um, well, there's sort of many definitions that give you something roughly equivalent in how fast it grows. Uh, I mean, very, very roughly, but, um, but the kind of the standard way to define it is, um, you know, max number of ones um, uh, that uh, a tm uh, can write uh, on empty tape uh, before halting. Okay, so the point is um, that we're looking, uh, sorry, that a TM, uh, sorry, a TM, of course, uh, with less than or equal to n states. This is the important part. Um, okay, so. Um, the idea is that that we're looking for a Turing machine. Um, uh, we're, we're looking for a Turing machine M, such that M of epsilon um, writes uh, some number of ones uh, on the tape, uh, then halts. Um, so act actually, it's, it's allowed to write other things first. It just needs to end with some number of ones on the tape, and then and then stop. Um, okay. Why why a number of ones and not uh, number ones and zeros. Uh, there's not much reason here. I mean, usually this uh, busy beaver function is defined actually in Turing in terms of Turing machines that have only one alphabet symbol other than the 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 the, the blank. There's the blank tape symbol, 
and then there's the, the one symbol and that's it. So it's often just defined in that minimalistic Turing machine model that only has kind of one symbol other than the blank symbol. Uh, we saw already why that's equivalent to um, normal Turing machine with larger table physics. Um, okay, but uh, so, so it doesn't matter. You can, you can imagine that this is just asking how many symbols you can write on the tape, uh, whether or not there are ones. Um, it, it's not going to make too much of a difference in the end. Um, so it's, it's kind of the maximum number of things that you can write on the tape. Uh, okay, but there's, there's two important criteria here. The Turing machine has to halt. Okay, we're not allowing the answer infinity. Okay, that's not valid. So if your machine loops forever and keeps writing ones, um, that's, that's no good, it doesn't count. So the, uh, we're only counting machines that halt. And also we're only counting machines, uh, we want M to have uh, at most N states. So we're only counting machines that have at most N uh, states, okay? Uh, where N is the input here to the BZB function. Okay, so we, oh, we only count M if M on epsilon halts. And also we only count M if N has more than N states. And out of such M, we, uh, the, out of such capital M's, we want the largest number, maybe I'll call it K here. We want the largest number K such that the machine printed K ones on the tape. Okay. So only out of machines that have at most N states and that halt on the empty input, um, find the one that wrote the most junk on the tape. Uh, look at how much stuff they draw on the tape. That's BZB burden. Okay. Um, so sometimes it's defined instead in terms of uh, how many steps did the machine take instead of how many things it wrote down. Um, so, okay, it, this is, it doesn't end up making that big of a difference. Um, okay, so this is, this is um, the definition of the busy free function. So now let's argue that this grows really fast. So why does it grow faster than every computable function? Um, okay, and the idea is, um, suppose you had a computable, fun a computable function g. So say g uh, is computable. Whoop, computable. So we have some machine uh, mg that computes it, right? So mg is a tm, uh, and then mg on input a number n. Uh, outputs, it outputs, um, you know, this number G of N and then halts. Okay, that, that's what it means to be computable that there's some Turing machine MG that does this, right? That does this computation. So uh, MG, um, so let's say it has some number of states. So MG, um, let's say it has K states. Okay, good. So, um, now, um, basically, so we were going to design a machine that basically, um, um, so, so um, for every n, so um, for any like number n, um, we, we design a machine, oops, design uh, a Turing machine. TM. Um, this Turing machine, okay, which uh, which prints um, basically, uh, let's say G of n plus one uh, ones. Okay, so our goal is to design a Turing machine which prints uh, this many ones, more than G n ones. Okay. Um, and then we also want uh, this machine. Um, so, so, so we want it to have um, only around around uh, k plus log n uh, states. Okay, for any n. Um, maybe a little bit more, like maybe this plus 10 or something. But we want to not have too many states. Okay, so how do we do this? So first of all, um, so, so, uh, uh, so we wanted to print this 
when run on the empty input. So, so uh, basically, um, yeah, we wanted to, run, to print this when run on epsilon okay, as input. Okay, so what do we do? So first of all, um, MGN, the, the way we'll design it, uh, MGN will have, um, sorry, uh, it will have the uh, number n hard-coded. Okay, so it will have um, this number n hard-coded. Okay, so it, that, that only takes like log n bits to write down the number n, okay, uh, in binary. So we will write down the number n in binary. Um, so um, this will, we'll, we'll basically use, uh, so basically we, we use log n states uh, in this machine. Um, okay, to um, start by writing uh, this number n on the tape. Uh, and again, uh, we write it in binary symbol by symbol. So one state per symbol of n, we just go and write that on the tape one by one. Okay, so that only takes us um, log n states in order to achieve that. Okay, and then after that, um, we, we basically, um, this machine MGN, the, the next thing it does is basically it runs M of G, it's like simulates M of G, uh, which of course converts this N into GN. Okay, so, so, so um, let, let me just start a new page here. So, um, so what did MGN do? So MGN on epsilon. So what it will do is first it will um, write this on tape. And this took us like log n states to achieve. Okay. And then it will um, run mg um, to get on tape. Okay. And this is around, uh, around k states where, where k is the number of states of uh, mg. Okay. Um, and then, and then the next thing it does is um, um, basically uh, print um, uh, number of ones equal to one more than this number that's written there. So this number in binary is like written there on the tape and we just basically want to convert it to that many ones. Um, and this is, this, is a, this is a constantly many states to do that. Okay, so we just need to kind of repeatedly write a one and like subtract off uh, a number from this. So this is achieved in constant uh, uh, states. Um, I don't know how many, like let's say it's it's 20 states or 10 states. Uh, it's some number that's not dependent on, on, on the number of states in M of G or on the numbers or, or on the number N at all. Okay, and then it halts. Okay, so so this is like finitely many steps in total. Okay, so M of G of N of M, uh, on epsilon always halts. So Note that we, we design many machines, right? This M G of N depends on N. So, so for any N, we have a machine here. So we have um, M G N. Uh, it's like a, a, a sequence of machines, one for each N, okay? And these machines don't have that many states. Um, so as a function of N, the number of states grows like something like, you know, K plus some constant, like K plus, I don't know, uh, K plus 100, let's call it plus, uh, log n. This is roughly the number of states um, of this machine MGN. Okay. Um, and so the next thing is uh, pick uh, pick a large number n. So we pick a large natural number n. So uh, n is bigger than uh, k plus 100 plus log n. Okay, and remember, n grows a lot faster than log n. 
Okay, so it's always possible to pick such n that grows fast, that, that is larger than k plus 100 plus log n. Okay, and of course, we'll depend on k and will be larger than k. Maybe, um, you know, um, and will be like 2k plus 200 or something that might already be enough. Um, so anyway, you pick some n that's larger than this. Um, and then what, what, what happens there? So basically we consider bb of n for this n. Okay, so let me start a new page here. So um, we have n is bigger than, uh, you know, uh, k plus 100, whoops, plus 100 plus log n. Um, and then we consider bb of n. Okay, so by definition, BB of N is a max number of ones that can be written. Okay, so it's the max number of ones that can be written on tape uh, before halting. Uh, by a TM with um, at most n states. Okay, but but note that MGN because of this condition, MGN has this many states. So M has less than MGN. Oops, MGN uh, has at MGN has at most n states. Okay, so. BB of n is at least a uh, number of ones mg of n writes. Okay, but that, that uh, you know, but that is g of n plus one. Okay, so BB of n is at least g of n plus one. Um, and that's for any n that's at least this big. So. Once n surpasses this value, um, then any larger n also is bigger than this value. So for every sufficiently large n, um, then uh, this b0, b0 function is larger than, than g of n uh, plus one. So this b0, b0 function uh, grew faster than g of n plus one. Um, can we make it so that b0, b0 grows larger than, than two g of n? Um, you know, the answer is yes, because if g of n is computable, then two g of n is also computable. Just compute g of n and multiply by two. So therefore bb of n also grows faster than this. Okay, and, um, and so on for any computable modification to g of n. Remember, if g of n is computable, then uh, two to the g of n is computable. And so b, 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 b verb n eventually grows to be bigger than two to the g of n plus one. Okay, so for sufficiently large n. So we, we, we've just shown something really strong. Um, we've shown that, that any computable function um, will eventually start, for, for sufficiently large n, it will start always being smaller than bzb of n, okay? Um, and so bzb of n is uh, an extremely fast growing function that grows faster than anything computable. Uh, and notice another implication. If you have any function that grows faster than BZ Beaver, it cannot be computable. So that means that, that any sufficiently fast growing function, any function that grows sufficiently fast is automatically not computable. It just needs to grow faster than the BZ Beaver functions. Um, then it will automatically be not be computable. So there's various examples of functions that grow somewhere on the same vicinity as BZ Beaver. Um, for example, uh, and, and, and they generally have to do with the actions of Turing machines that have at most n states. So you can imagine a variant of BZ Beaver where instead of counting how many ones you can write, you count how many ones or zeros you can write. Or, okay, so that, that's that for, by the same argument that grows. Um, I mean, you can s take one such machine that, that prints zeros or ones and turn it into a machine that prints only ones or vice versa. So you can convert between the two to kind of show that um, you can relate the BZ Beaver function to this new modification. Uh, you can relate them to each other. Um, uh, or, you know, consider another fast growing function where um, 
you ask for the number of steps a machine can take before halting. So you can take, um, you know, uh, let's, let's, I don't know, we'll call it S of N, this function. S of N is uh, max number of steps taken by a TM um, such that, uh, um, so sorry, uh, by the Turing machine M um, when run on epsilon, whoops, when run on epsilon such that M of epsilon halts. So it has to be a finite number of steps and uh, M has at most N states. Okay, so Basically, this one says, uh, of all the Turing machines with its most end states, consider the one that runs for the longest finite time, okay, and, and, and output that amount of time, um, the number of steps it takes before halting, only of the ones that halt. Don't count the ones that don't halt. Okay, and the thing is, this is kind of hard to compute because you don't know, given a machine, whether it will halt. That's the halting problem. So you, you don't know if you run a machine for a certain amount of time, whether it's going to eventually halt or, or you just need to keep running it and, and see and eventually halt or it will never halt. That's kind of impossible to tell by, by the halting problem. And so it's sort of intuitive that you cannot compute this function. It turns out to grow somewhere in the vicinity of the growth of busy beaver function. And the reason is um, you can um, take a machine that outputs ones if, if M uh, outputs ones uh, can uh, convert, we can convert it uh, to M prime uh, that simulates M. Um, and then uh, runs for, uh, you know, number of steps equal to number of ones. Um, so, you know, you, you can, you can, you can first kind of, uh, run, uh, write a certain number of ones and then, and then run the machine for a number of steps equals the number of runs you, ones you wrote. So now you sort of, um, modified the machine without changing the number of states too much. You, you this can all be done in like a constant number of states overhead. So you only increase the number of states by a bit, but now you, you kind of made the machine run for as many steps as number of ones written. And you can do the reverse. So you can, you know, uh, if, if M, if M uh, runs a long time, uh, um, we can get, we can convert it to M prime, uh, which simulates M, which simulates M counts its step, it, it counts, its steps, uh, then writes that many ones. Okay, and the overhead in this simulation is only a constant number of states. So you can you can do all that, and you kind of only added a constant number of states to m in order to get m prime. And and so essentially, this is going to tell you. Um, so these these arguments, if you kind of go through with them, um, they'll basically tell you that uh, uh, S of N is less than BZ Beaver of N plus something, like let's say N plus 100, uh, basically because you can use a machine with N plus 100 many states that will print as many ones as, as, as a machine with N states run for. And also that uh, the reverse is true that BZ Beaver of N is less than S of N plus 100 um, for sort of the same reason that if you had a machine that um, uh, prints a certain, um, sorry, one of them, one of these directions is if you have a machine that prints a lot of ones, you can get a machine that runs for that many steps. And the other direction is if you have a machine that runs for a lot of steps, you can get a machine with only a few more steps, states that runs for that um, counts those steps and prints that many ones. Um, Okay, so actually one of these directions is, is kind of uh, 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 trivial. So it, it's kind of trivial that if a machine, let's see. So it's kind of trivial that if a machine 
prints a lot of ones, um, then that same machine has to run for a lot of steps. So actually this inequality, I don't think you need the plus 100. Um, I think this just holds uh, without even a plus 100, just because if you need to print that many ones, then you automatically run for that many steps. Um, OK, but the point is that, that you, you get these relationships that tell you that um, up to changing the input by a constant amount, uh, these two functions are, are equivalent. And they're both, uh, they both grow uncomputably fast. So they, they grow faster than any computable function. Uh, OK, so that's, that's it for the BBB reflection.